Scott laid the D all up in Brian. I'm talking about he laid it up in him heavy. I'm talking about there was no, no soaping, no nothing. And he didn't even give him a reach around. I'm talking about he laid the D. Dude, he drug Ryan's ass by three, three and a half cars, man. You hear me? I'm not lying, but he laid the D all up in him, man. guys by now you have already seen the videos of our new hampshire race that is the fourth race of street outlaw no prep kings we were going to go ahead and leave from that race and head down to maple grove in pennsylvania we decided that it was better for us to be able to just pass that track and go all, all the way down to uh mooresville north carolina where we could meet up with justin at modern racing give him the car let them figure out uh what they need to do to be able to go through all the wiring and uh, actually figure it if we have an issue or something that we need to fix. So my dad wants to do a recap video, so we're gonna hear from his side of the story, what he saw this weekend, what he thought about the car, what he thought about all the other cars, and uh, what he thinks is gonna happen with our program and how we're gonna perform moving on from uh, this past weekend. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shift the camera over to him, let him do his little recap, and let's get going with it. We'll go out there and crack somebody's ass. For all the haters out there that say we don't know how to do it. I got the best team in the world that's gonna prove you wrong and show you just how good we are. doing this shit on the fly because we're heading down to Mooresville right now so I won't be able to look at the screen too much I gotta make sure I keep my eye on the road but uh anyways first I want to start off thanking our whole crew man Justin's done a great job of putting a good crew around us around him uh and the crew worked really hard all the weekend one person I really want to thank is one I, I never thank her enough and that's my wife that's Justin's mom mama country she has gone above and beyond as part of the team and helping us out as far as preparing, getting food ready, getting our clothes ready, getting the rig cleaned up, getting the rig, uh, when we get ready to leave, clean the rig up again. And she set up plane tickets, uh, you name it, she's doing it. Uh, you know, she's going above and beyond every race. Uh, she's always worried about everybody, you know, taking care of everybody really more than worrying about herself. So she's very selfless about that. And, uh, she just does a great job. Mama Kim, she was a great help this weekend. She helped my wife a lot. Uh, and then the list goes on from all the guys. You got Tony, you got Brian, you got Big Brian, Little Brian. Uh, so we got two Brian's in there. You got Kyle, you got uh, Art, um, and there I think even Tony had his buddy uh, Joel there. And uh, we're missing one guy, Eric. Um, he comes with us, but he had to stay back home and he worked, so he couldn't come. But uh, that's basically our whole crew. And then of course you got Justin, you know, he's wrapped some good guys around him. And uh, this weekend, you know, it was a roller coaster ride. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I watched how the crew worked. Um, and you know, that crew's gonna be successful. Um, yes, I tuned the car, but that's the easy part. Um, he, that, that crew would run good with anybody, to be honest with you, because I watched how they all work together, how they gel together. Justin's got each guy sorted out, each guy's lined out, they all got a job. Um, and that's how you got to run it, man. You got to run that thing like a fine old machine. And as time goes on, it will get better and better and better. Uh, that car is doing very well. Um, I believe that car is a serious uh, competitor right now. And I think every one of those guys out there knows that car is a serious competitor. I'm, I'm pretty sure that none of them want to draw that car right now. Um, I think there's a lot of fast cars out there. Can it, can prenup be beat? Absolutely. Um, but, uh, Anybody that draws prenup is going back to the pits thinking, shit, I did not want to draw that car. You can bet on that. Anyways, let's get down to the race. Um, we got there, we unloaded, we got set up. Uh, you know, we went out there and we made our first shakedown. Um, you know, and, and, and we run our car, we're always going to run it hard. That's just how we run it. Um, we're going to look at the track. We don't really care who we race. 
uh, we're going to look at the track and we're going to figure out how to run and, and that's how we're going to run the car. Every time we run the car, we're going to run it that way. It doesn't really matter who we race. Uh, so we unloaded the car. Justin went out there and we started in the burnout box. The car, Justin's got a switch inside the car, which he knows more about the car than really than I do. Um, he's been through the whole process of building that car, wiring that car. You know, I don't try and dip into his territory. He don't dip into my territory. So. I guess there's a rev burnout switch in there. Um, them things, when they make that boost, they make boost instantly. So it, the, the rev control is pretty hard on them things. The motors are turned 10,000 RPMs like it's nothing, especially in the burnout box. So when he started his burnout, the car revved really high. Of course, I didn't know anything. I didn't know that happened. Um, Justin knew it happened though. We made the run, the car ran good, made a good pass, made a good lick. Um, after, uh, after we got back though, as it made the run, I told Brian that I said, man, it, it looked like it laid over out there again. And uh, he's like, no, I made a good pass. I said, man, I don't think so. I said, I, I think it laid over. Um, so I, um, I, I, I got back, we got the car back, we looked at the data. And when I looked at the data, the car did in fact lay over. In fact, it did not even come out of second gear. It rated a whole rip in first gear. I don't even know who, who you grudge raced on that race. Who did you? Oh, Robert, Robert, Robert. I mean, Robert, uh, Robert. Robert. Huh? Robin Roberts. Robin Roberts, but he had he had a problem on the light or something. So I uh I didn't see we didn't really get a good comparison because we didn't run against another car, but just my visual, it looked like the car laid over again. So when we checked the data, it did in fact lay over. In fact, it never came out of second gear. Um it labored down there. tried to check every now I really could not find any reason why that thing laid over and I hate that as a tuner when it does something it'll drive you nuts unless you figure out why it did what it did um, but Justin went out and he checked the blower um, and and also in fact before that he had he had come in he checked his in-car camera and he said hey I did over rev it I saw inside the car that it did over rev it and he said in fact it did not even come out of second gear like you said so he went and checked the blower and the blower touched down. So at that point when the blower touched down, the guys immediately yanked the blower off the car and they were out there changing the blower while I was looking at the tune-up. Um, they got the blower yanked off the car in no time and got it put back together. And then we went back out there to make our second shakedown. Whoever we were grudge racing on our second shakedown, I think they broke. So we were making a, a buy run. Um, you know, we went ahead and loaded it for bear. We wanted to go ahead and get, put a tune-up in it and see what the track was gonna hold and it left out of there and it left really hard. It shook the tires and moved left and Justin had to get out of it. So really, you know, that's just a, a, a tuner's problem. That's a tuner that didn't get the car to go down the track. So, but we came back, we looked at the data. The data was good. The blower was healthy again. We didn't have no problem. So. Going into that night, I was looking at the plugs and I noticed the number three plug and number three cylinder, it had a nick on the electrode. And I didn't know if it was like that when we put the plugs in there or if I had something going on in that cylinder. So I had told Art to go ahead and put a new plug in that hole. So when we make a run Saturday, I want to see what's going on with it. So come around Saturday, Saturday morning, I jumped out underneath the car. I made a four link adjustment because of what what we did the night before that. The car went left and it shook pretty hard. So I went ahead and made a four link change on the car. And uh, so we got ready to make our round Saturday. Who did you draw Saturday, the first round? Tim Brown. Who? Tim Brown. Okay, so we drew Tim Brown. Um, we laid the tune up in the car. It wasn't our hot tune up, but we went and put it in it. I wanted to see what the four link did. The car gone ripped down the track good run come back it still to me didn't look like it was running as hard out the back so i pulled the data up and uh i happened to notice overlooking at the data i noticed that number three cylinder was losing heat so it's actually dropping the cylinder in those runs um you know she was banging on seven cylinders what was going on so immediately, uh, Justin ran over to um, Bruder Brothers Pit over there with Jackal and uh, uh, with uh, 
what are they, billet atomizers, injectors yep. with Jack French in them. So he got two injectors for them, two brand new injectors, because we didn't know what was wrong with it. We just knew we had a dead hole. So the guys pulled the side motor apart, put two injectors in it. We went ahead and changed the coal, uh, coal on plugs out, put coal on plugs in it, changed the plug wire, loaded the same spark plug in the one that I had our change Friday night. We loaded that same spark plug in that hole. Didn't really see anything going on. We loaded it. So we go out there to make our pass. We barely made it to the second round for Kai Kelly. Um, he waited for us. Huh? Yes. He waited for us. Kai waited for us in the, in the staging lanes, but we were like hauling ass. I didn't even realize we were running late. Um, but, you know, we were late to make that call, but we got up there. We made the call. Um, I looked through the windshield and Kai and told him he better drop the hammer because uh, we we're fixing to load it up on him. So we got ready to make that pass. Boom. Justin left drug Kai's ass the whole way all the way down there and uh you know we made a good pass but the car still looked to me like down there together and it just wasn't running as hard as I normally see the car run I can pretty much give it a good visual and tell when the car is running good and when it's not um <clears throat> but nevertheless it was good enough to uh drag Justin's son Uh, 
the O2 loop went from reading O2 to went to zero, back up and reading and went back to zero again. So the, uh, the fuel tech definitely recognized something. And a lot of y'all have been in the comment section asking, well, if the power shut off, why didn't the parachutes deploy that go around? Uh, the reason is we run a lay heat box inside the car. That's the deal I was telling y'all about a couple videos ago where if I have a backfire or power shuts off, it automatically deploys the chutes. We've been having issues with the car not wanting to fire up when we were on the starting line. Uh, if you've seen round one, we were over there trying to figure out how to get it fired up. We had an issue with our lay heat box. It was turning the ignition on and off and we just got lucky to be able to turn it on. So the round after Kai, we went ahead and found the issue and we bypassed that late heat box. Basically how it's wired in the car is, is when you turn the power on, you turn the ignition on, everything has to go through the late heat box and then your ignition and everything's running. So if you have a backfire or a power shut off, it deploys the chutes. Well, now that we bypassed that and basically eliminated that factor because we knew we had a bad box in the car, uh, it was turning on and off uh, intermittently that we went ahead and bypassed it. So when we ran that round against Randy, yes, the car shut off, but it didn't deploy the chutes because the box was basically taken out of the car. So I wanted to explain that to y'all real quick. There was a lot of comments talking about, well, why didn't chutes deploy, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the reason why. We basically got that out of the car. We're taking it down to Modern Racing. We're gonna let them go through it all. Yes, we'll be putting it back in the car because it is a safety feature. Um, with everything that is in our program. So we just need to get everything back right. But I want to explain that to y'all real quick. It makes it NHRA legal too. That's kind of the reason why Modern Racing runs that stuff. Say it again? It makes it NHRA legal because that's why that's why they run that stuff. So not that you have to have that, but that's just why they got it in there. But anyways, on that note too, the other thing that happened that you didn't say is, so the car cut off, but it never shut off. It never lost power. The engine kept running. It just, yeah, it idled. I just lost all function. Yeah, Justin was just, so he was like this, that thing set back and it was like, and it was ripped. And then about a second half, it really ripped and got back on the bars again. I knew that dog was hunting then. I knew, I mean, I knew she was hunting out there. You better and rip then, on this road. Dude. And then it just, <laughs> and then it just nosed over. And I looked at Brian and Brian looked at me and I said, it, I said, it cut off. I said, car shut off. Brian's like, no. He goes, it shook the tires. I said, I said, I said it didn't shake the tires. It hazed the tires. I saw it haze the tires, but I had all that under control. I trust me, I had her choked down. And Brian's like, no, no, I saw it. It smoked the tires. I said, listen, that little bit of smoke, it was just hazing the tires. It, that ain't the problem. I'm telling you right now. I said, the car cut off. I said it shut off. So at the end of the day, we got back and sure shit it shut off. But it still, we didn't lose battery bolts. We didn't lose the engine was still running. It just lost power. It had no power. What I'm, I mean. Like I said, something happened with the O2s. I don't know if it sends a signal to the to the cam sync or the cam bus, but it signaled something in the ECU and the ECU shut it down. We That's fired exactly. it right back up. Uh, yeah, we fired right back. Like right now, we feel like we can go run the car, but we don't know what's wrong with it. Oh, hold on, I gotta get off here. Bear with me a minute, guys. Which way am I supposed to go, Just Oh, okay, I'm on this one right here. Uh, so, yeah, so that's why we're heading to modern racing because we can't take a chance to go to Pennsylvania because I, I truly believe, although there's a lot of great cars out there, I believe prenup was going to the winner's circle. It was for sure going to go to the finals, without a doubt. It was sure, for sure, and Randy Williams will tell you this because I know he got a good look at what was fixing to go on. It was for sure going to the semifinals. You can take that to the bank. But coulda, woulda, shoulda. That is what it is. We move on from that. We just need to fix the problem. So we got to, when we go to uh, Pennsylvania, we know we got a hot rod to race again. But, uh, so that's why we're going to go ahead and head on over here and try and get us a little bit extra work on us, man. You know, threw about another 12 hours on us. But we're going to head down there and just some uh, elk from Modern Racing. We're going to get on that thing tomorrow. Mitch is going to get on it tomorrow. And uh, they're going to try and get that thing figured out. And then we'll get headed back up to Maple Grove. We're going to put it on the hub down. I guess. <laughs> so at the end of the day, though, uh, it was a good race, definitely a roller coaster. Uh, I'll tell you this, man, to be honest with you, to run a car at that level, the, the crew of guys that Justin has around him right now, that's what you gotta have. I'm not gonna lie. That car is entirely too much work for me. I'm too old for that shit. Um, I can't work like that, but he's got a good group of guys around him and they're all getting more consistent on what they're doing on all their job duties and it's showing up. And, and it throughout this run and this season, it's gonna show too. There's no doubt about it. Here's the thing, you can't win them all. And even if you win one, you know, that's just some icing on the cake. So Justin's won one race. If he wins another one, great, 
right now he just got to try and run hard and be consistent keep going rounds and look at the championship at the end that's the biggest focus right now if he can win another race cool we will but right now we're going to race the track we're going to race each round we're going to run it hard and uh i promise you no matter what any of them guys say when they draw them chips they do not want to draw justin and prenup i can guarantee you that right now every one of them out there do not want to draw him right now and they got good reason to because i promise you that dog is hunting right now that dog's tail is wagging believe that when it leaves so but at the end of the day it's all good but what i do want to tell you one thing is you know some of y'all might not know this one of my good buddies i saw po uh, poking around the track there this weekend and this is one of these guys that is a uh, man he's uh he, he, uh, he, he's very smart. He's a very good calculated uh, nitrous tuner. Uh, and the guy I'm going to tell you his name is, some of y'all know him, some of y'all might know him, but his name is Dean Marinas. And, uh, and Dean is one of the best nitrous tuners out there in the game. I promise you that. He's as good as, I rate him up there with Billy Stockland. I mean, there's some really good nitrous tuner guys out there. You know, uh, Shannon Jenkins, obviously Pat Musi, all of them guys, but I'm gonna tell you, Dean Moranson. So I believe that Lizzie's car is gonna be a serious, serious contender, especially seeing Dean poke around there. You know, I know that uh, that car was just built by, um, who, who built that car again? Uh, Robert Hayes. Robert Hayes, and I know Robert, you know, he works on the chassis. That car running good. I heard it run, I was, I was down there at my pits and I heard it run, I knew it was Lizzie's car. I heard the lockup come on early and I heard that old big pop of music motor bellering down through there. I knew it made a good lick. Um, I don't know what happened with her race. I think she got put out. Uh, but either way, that car is going to be a contender. I know with Dean Marinas over there helping those guys, that car is going to be fast. Um, you know, Kai, you might want to be nice and uh, maybe Pat will lend you to Dean and help you out because you're going to need it, buddy, to be honest with you. Otherwise, uh, Liz is going to be kicking your ass the rest of the season. But anyways, that's just how it goes, man. So, uh, oh, I do want to talk about one more thing. So listen here, Justin, you don't even know nothing about this. I'm going to tell you right now, this is to all the Street Outlaw guys. And uh, some, of them, some of you might get mad, but I don't really give a shit. If any of you cornball motherfuckers tell me any more about how fast you're going with that goddamn draggy, I'm just going to tell you right now, come get me. Take me to your car and show me where it's at and bring me a ball peen hammer so I can beat the shit out of that thing and bust it all up so to quit giving you false hope. Cause I'm telling you right now, them draggies are full of shit. I'm tired of hearing about how fast everybody's going out there cause I know how fast prenup is and that bitch ain't going nowhere near that fast and it's dragging motherfuckers ass out there. So stop with that goddamn false hope. The best thing you can do to get your car faster is to take deal with the truth. Hey, your camera's rolling to the right, Hoss. I got side view. Come oh, okay. On. You just keep talking. <laughs> so, uh, that's what I'm telling you, man. Deal with the truth, man. It's going to help you get that car lined out. It's going to help you get it faster. Also, one more thing. Boy, let me tell you what. I, Justin, you didn't get to see this, but we was down there. After you lost your round, we was, we was heading down there to grab you. And we went down there to... Uh, we was right about the eighth mile and they announced that Ryan Martin and Scott Taylor was fixing the race. So I told the guys, hey man, let's pull over. Let's watch them race come through at eighth mile here. Man, I'm not gonna lie to you. Scott's been wanting that race for a while. Hey bro, Scott laid the D all up in Ryan. I'm talking about, he laid it up in him, heavy. I'm talking about there was no, no soaping, <laughs> no nothing. And he didn't even give him a reach around. I'm talking about he laid the D. Dude, he drug Ryan's ass by three, three and a half cars, man. You hear me? I'm not lying, boy. He laid the D all up in him, man. Boy, I, I'll be honest with you. That shit was so bad, I kind of felt bad for Ryan. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> God damn. Scott Taylor drug his ass. Hey, he did the same thing to fucking Sean Murder Noah. I think Scott Taylor is the 405 killer right now. I'm not gonna lie. They're, Scott, he's huh? running good. Dude, Scott Taylor is the motherfucking... Hey, everybody in the 405 right now not wanting to draw Scott Taylor. I promise you that. Scott Taylor is the goddamn one-man shebang, the 405 motherfucking killer. That bitch laid the D up in it. I, I didn't get to watch the race with him and Sean, but I heard he fucking ripped Sean a new ass, too. So, you know, them boys... They'll get it figured out. Huh? Yeah, them 405 guys better get back to the grinding stone now. You know what I mean? I'm Scott Taylor. Good job this weekend, man. 
you running good. I wish we could have been there with you. I would have liked to have been there to run you. I know you fucking gapped our ass in, uh, in what, what was it, West Palm Beach? No. Yeah, so we owe you an ass cutting. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely wanting to fucking oblige you with that ass cutting too. So you're running good, but uh, you ain't had the big country gauntlet dropped on you yet. The motherfucking hammer is coming. Y'all boys get ready. We are gonna get our shit fixed. And we'll see y'all on Maple Grove. All right, guys, that's a little bit of recap from uh, my dad uh, about the race this weekend. We had a, a lot of good things happen, a lot of bad things. The good overdid the bad. Uh, sucks that we lost the round in third round, but we're still up there in the points. We're going to uh, keep going hard, try to win the championship this season. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel. We already hit the 50,000 mark. We're already steadily growing. If we get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna take the whole entire crew on a trip somewhere. We're still trying to figure out where we wanna go uh, with going on right now for our vacation, but we gotta get to 100,000 subscribers first. So if y'all keep on liking, keep on sharing, we get 100,000, I'll take the whole entire crew on a uh, special trip. But uh, make sure you drop a like on this video, drop a comment down below, and we'll see you later. Turn the camera, look right here. See how I'm going by that rig? That's what the gap looks like at the back when prenup's coming right here. Look, look to your right. We're just going right on by that motherfucker. That motherfucking.